welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. And we've got uh, Larry down there in the Southland who survived the latest storm surges it went through. Hi, Larry. Hey, Stuart. Yeah. I guess you guys have had some weather down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it, but, but weather everywhere is abnormal. Oh, all across the world. Yeah, it's not just here. Before we get going on uh, tonight's show, we've got. Uh, I wanted to uh, read something, and it's called "Connect the Real Salvation Dots." And it's just kind of a little game that we're going to play, and hopefully, people will write down some of this. If you've got a pen and a piece of paper, you might want to jot down where these are coming from, and uh, do word studies on them. Anyway, we're going to start with John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, I want you to think about that one. You search the scriptures thinking... uh, that in them you will have eternal life. But Jesus here is clearly saying they're just a testimony of who I am. They're not me. They are, uh, it's a book, it's paper, it's ink, and the words that are therein, written by the Lord himself through various people throughout the eons, uh, are the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 40, and you will not come to me that you might have life. So here he's talking about the book versus coming to him personally. You will not come to me personally that you might have life. Divine agape, of course, is classified in the scriptures as life. And it's also salvation. I will receive, I receive not honor from men. Of course not. He's behind enemy lines. They hated him. They reviled him. They persecuted him. And ultimately, they killed him. So he did not receive any honor <clears throat> from men. Then he goes on to say something very interesting. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Now, you'll find a comment worded a little different way in Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus says to the multitudes of Christians, I never knew you. Well, if he knew them, they would have life. We'll get into that. Okay, John chapter 3. And this is the condemnation, that light, which is divine love, you want to look it up, is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Now, what is all that about? Well, there's only one condemnation, and that is that divine love and the figure of Jesus Christ came into the planet Earth, came into the matrix, and men didn't like him. They didn't want anything to do with him. They loved their their, their existence. They didn't want to have anybody coming in here and telling them they were evil and that they needed redemption and all of this. They don't want to hear that kind of stuff. So what did they do? They killed him. Okay, John six thirty seven. All that the Father giveth me 
shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Now, I've said before, and I want to repeat it again. Having faith and having belief are the prerequisites for coming to the Lord. You're not going to obey the Lord if you don't really believe what he has to say. You're not going to come to the Lord if you don't have faith in what he said. So, he's not using the words faith. All that the Father giveth me shall believe and come to me, or have faith. He didn't say that. He said, come to me. The prerequisite is what I just said. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, those under the yoke of the law or ritual or legalisms and those who struggle to improve themselves so that the Lord will accept them. All of those are works. I will give you rest, he says, if you will come to me. Well, unfortunately, the vast majority of Christians, they have faith, they have belief, but they have been told there is no coming to the Lord. Unfortunately, they have to negate a tremendous amount of Bible to come up with that theology. So what does that actually mean? A friend says to come to his house. It means that you, if you accept the invitation, you would get in your car or walk to his house. You would actually go there, and there you would meet him, thus directly uh, to the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Same thing. It's the revealing of the mystery of God, who is divine love, and mankind doesn't have divine love. He lost it at the fall. How can we prove it? One verse. Actually, there's a hundred verses, but this is the best one. Behold, what manner of love, divine agape, look it up, uh, the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Well, how does one become a son of God? By rebirth, by quickening. By regeneration. Look up the word quickening or quickeneth, let's probably, or quicken, and, and do a word study on it. It's very, very interesting. Behold means to have shown, to have it shown to you, to have it revealed unto you. We lost divine agape. We suffered spiritual death at the fall of mankind in Genesis. That's what the Lord meant when he said, in the day you eat thereof, of this knowledge of good and evil, is very, very real. These are two opposing spiritual forces that operate in your mind all the time, day and night, 24-7, 365, from the time you're born until the time you die. That's what it's about. It's this battle between good and evil. That's the yin-yang symbol of uh, the Far East. Uh, That's what it's about. It's about this eternal battle that mankind has because of this knowledge. That knowledge brought the fall. The fall brought the necessity to be redeemed. To be redeemed, you have to have a messiah. The Messiah has to have certain qualifications or he cannot redeem. Therefore, we enter into the uh, kinsman redeemer law of Israel. I don't know what has happened to people that they they, they just don't seem to be able to figure out this stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, that's, uh, I just wanted to bring that, connect those dots, do a word study on them. Uh, Jesus said what he meant, and he meant exactly what he said. And uh, he said it for a reason. Uh, One of the reasons uh, I wrote uh, books on frequency, frequencies one and two are out, frequency three will be out shortly. Um, The frequency books prove totally, 
prove why Jesus said what he said, why you had to come to him. Not just believe in him, not just have faith in him. Uh, Belief and faith actually are verbs. Like love is a verb. It requires action. Anyway, that's why Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do anything I tell you? You know, I mean, if you let's say you get a job at a at a major company, and the, you get hired by the CEO, and he gives you a secretary and an office and all of this stuff. You don't even show up. Uh, how long do you think you're going to be uh, getting a paycheck? It's the same thing, Lord. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Not do what I say. We could word it this way. Why do you call me boss, boss, when you don't even show up? Same thing. Very, very simple. But for whatever reason, people are locked into this uh, fake gospel, which Peter talked about. And even Jesus, when he was here, talked about it. Wolves and sheep's clothing. Peter warned about these people. They would become very, very wealthy, very rich. They're the, they're the evangelists, the preachers and the teachers of today. They're on TV. They're everywhere. And they're raking in millions and millions of dollars. All you got to do is go online and Google the main ministries and see how much money they're making and how they live. Jet airplanes, private airports, huge mansions. Peter says they have their reward now, and their damnation slumbers not. The problem is that their followers' damnation doesn't slumber either. So anyway, um, enough of that. I wanted to get into something that uh, Larry brought up to me, uh, that there's a new Bible code from Barry Rothman. Before we get into that, I want to read something Larry also sent to me. It's called The Pause. And the foundation of what he says at Jeremiah 30, 11 through 15. And that is about Israel, basically, but it applies to the Christians as well. And um, how we are basically incurables, deplorables, <laughs> to use... Pelosi's terminology. So I'm going to just read the transcript. My son, the Persians, Iran, are masters of the pause. The ancient Persians would surround a city for years, just waiting for the perfect time to attack. My people have fallen for the pause before. They're falling for it again. My children, do you believe everything you see or hear in the media? (laughs) Well, I guess one could say if you do, you really need to be re-educated. Remember, I said, do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. China and Persia are partners. Russia and Persia are partners. Read Daniel 8, folks. If Persia... Is your right hand, what is your left hand doing? I say keep your eyes on Russia and China. They will be the ones who will bring destruction to this nation. Do not be lulled back to sleep by the pause. My son, I have warned and sounded the alarms for my children to wake up. (laughs) I don't know, can you be awoken out of a comatose, Larry? <laughs> I guess Larry's letting the dogs out. No, that Larry, believe you there? it or not, Stuart. But yeah, believe it or not, when you was began reading that, all the dogs in the neighborhood here begin howling like wolves. It's just really strange. Maybe they're trying to warn us of something. I think <laughs> the pause is almost over. That's my guess. Uh, we're going to tie this into what's going on in Virginia what's going on in the United Nations, what's going on in Kansas, and maybe even Nebraska and elsewhere. Anyway, uh, my son, I have warned and sounded the alarm for my children to wake up out of the sleep. 
they have been in. I have begun shaking the world. America, you are next. Prepare, I said, and prepare, I mean. For when the shake comes, you will know it is I who have commanded it. It is time for my people, my children, my body to wake up and get out of this fantasy sleep they have been in. Well, what would you say to that, Larry? I guess, you know, a fantasy sleep is like a deep coma, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so amazing. But uh, when you think about it, Stuart, uh, if there is a church in America, what was the latest thing that they cried out? Do you even remember? Well, it certainly wasn't against abortion. I don't recall hearing anything about repentance. In fact, probably when you go to most churches today, they'll read some popular book. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, my son, the pause is used to instill fear in an enemy, never knowing for sure what comes next or even when. I have given you, my children, the game plan and my word, but so many do not believe my word that when the attack comes, it's going to catch my children totally off guard. All shepherds teach and preach only the gospel that babies want to digest. <laughs> I love that. Only my remnant <laughs> can eat meat. They are the ones with their eyes wide open. My son, this pause is a trick that the Persians know how to use all too well. Prepare for the onslaught of hundreds of missiles, not just a dozen. Prepare for the arrows to strike their targets with accuracy, not empty fields. The Persians are masters of war, as they have been doing it for thousands of years. This is a pause. Beware. My children, I say... Read my word. Repent of your sin. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's an awful word. This can't be true, Larry. It's calling for repentance. <laughs> well, I don't know. Anyway, George, you know, you, talk, you talked about the pause, and if, if over a number of years now, or at least 50 years, that's exactly what the, the Soviet Union used. That's what the Russians are using. That's what the Korean, the North Koreans are using. China's using it. Uh, Iran's using it. It it, it is a, a a pause. Is nothing other than for preparation for another attack. And uh, it, it's a sad. It's a, it's really so sad that the leadership of this America devolved or or actually. Uh, evolved into such a morass of stupidity and evil that they no longer even worry about the American people, and I guess the American people will be caught by surprise. Yeah, they will. I mean, the Bible says that uh, this is going to come as a total surprise. Uh, the word repent, of course, is in here. Uh, most people don't even know what the word repent means. Or uh, anyway, <clears throat> my children... I say, read my word, repent of your sins, for you never know when you will be standing before me. I will start shaking America as it has never been shaken before. Watch the left hand, for it will slap you, America, and stop you. Be ready, for the bugs are in the system, and the system will go down. Pray for peace. Seek me in all things. Have your house in order. I love you very much, Lord Jesus. Now, like any of these things, you have to take these things with a grain of salt. However, uh, with all the study uh, that I have done, and I flew an Air Prince in my aviation career for about three or four months. He was over here at the War College, uh, flying the latest jets, being taught how to fly the latest of jets. And uh, these people are different. Uh, the American people do not understand who these people are. And during that uh, time of tenure when I was flying this Arab Prince, 
I also had an Arab first officer, and I got to know him very well. And uh, what was just said about the pause and who these people are and how they operate, it's dead on accurate, dead on accurate. We're in a lot of trouble. And that brings us to Barry Rothman's latest. Have you got that in front of you, Larry? Well, I do. I've got two in front of me, one from Barry Rothman and one from uh, Glazerson, a new one. Both of them new. Uh, January the 13th uh, was under construction. Uh, Barry Rothman actually, uh, because of the fact that Iran or the the people in Iran and the streets begin to call out something that is historic that they've never done before, uh, death to uh, the Khomeini, death to the Ayatollah, uh, Barry Rothman decided to go ahead and run a matrix, and he ran two matrix. And uh, let me give you the first one and then the second one and, and uh, see what your opinion is. The matrix number one is, and these are the words that uh, were in Hebrew in the code in the Torah, number one, dead Ayatollah, number two, oh. old, number three, Iran, number four, war. Number five, cancerous. Number six, stroke. Number seven is 5780 or 2020. Number eight, protest. And then when he ran the second code, it had a, a word in it that wasn't in the first one and, and a little bit different, not, not a lot. The second code is number one, dead Ayatollah. Number two, oh. Mahdi. Number three, Iran. Number four, protest. Number five, war. Number six, cancerous. Number seven, year 5780, 2020. And so, Stuart, when I looked at those, I thought, you know, that almost is like a time clock. It tells you what time it is. It's It's got in there, uh, apparently, Ayatollah leaving the scene, if you will, and yep. in the second matrix, as the Mahdi shows up, maybe, or the Mahdi maybe calls the Ayatollah to pass away, uh, in Iran, and it's during a time of protest and war, and uh, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, it looks like a clock, it, but what it tells us is what time we're in. Well, I think it goes right back to the pause that we read, that he was going to shake the nations. Uh, he, he's when, he, when the term is used, shake the nations, there's two things that are involved. You've got, when you have a magnetic collapse, uh, electromagnetic field collapse, according to everything I can find out, the field goes to zero before it reverses. Uh, so your North Pole collapses, all the other poles that are associated with it, they all collapse at one time, and there is no magnetic shield. And then suddenly it reverses and goes, the North Pole becomes South Pole, et cetera, et cetera. During you know that what? period of pause, you have a great shaking, a literal uh, shaking of the planet. That's one type of shake. Yeah, what he's now, talking there, about here. Yeah, go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that would certainly get your attention between the <laughs> beginning and the end, you know, the changeover. But, uh, you know, something that struck me that might be a clue, you remember the original black and white uh, the day the Earth stood still, you know, with a yes. giant robot that came out of the saucer craft and all of that. Yep. Do you remember that what sign the nations were given that they were really serious? These this arrival people, you know, uh, Michael Rennie, he play, he was the actor in it. That he he was so serious that the sign he gave the whole world was remember everything electrical stop working. Yeah, an EMP. That was under the control of an alien force. Yeah. Uh, the shaking here most likely is going to be a change of rulership. Uh, with the Mahdi, uh, there are a lot of, uh, I can't say a lot, but I know of several Iranian clerics who said they believed that Obama was the 12th Ayman or the Mahdi and that he would come back into power. There's been a ton of Christians that have thought the same thing. I know a lot of people laugh at that, and they say it couldn't possibly happen. The Lord can do anything he wants, and we are under judgment as a nation. 
We have turned our back upon God. We kill the innocents. In fact, I was reading an article in 2018. We killed more little babies in the womb and probably some outside the womb, uh, more deaths of the innocent in 2018 than ever before. We can't keep doing this. You just can't give your finger to the Lord and prance off thinking that he's not going to reply to you. He's already starting to reply. We're watching it in Washington. We're watching it in Virginia. We're watching it in what's going on in uh, Kansas. And we're going to get to those very serious signs of bad, bad trouble and judgment. The Lord has held off his judgment uh, from America far beyond anything I would have ever thought because many, many years ago, maybe even 25 years ago, I was told by the Lord that America had crossed the line and was going under judgment. I, that's that. I don't ask people to ever believe that it was a vision from the Lord. It might have been my overactive um, imagination at the time, but I was taken to Washington, D.C., and I was shown the corruption and everything that's going on there. And I was told, in no uncertain terms, America was found wanting, had been weighed into judgment, and there was no turning back. We had crossed the line, and we were going under severe judgment. And uh, one by one, the judgments have begun to occur. You get one here, you get a pause, you get one there, then you get another one, and most of these are in the form of uh, storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding, that sort of thing. And look at what's happening to Australia. I mean, it's a, it's a mess, absolute mess. Anyway, where do you want to start with this? What's going on, Larry? Um, <laughs> I don't know where you start with this stuff. What's going on in Washington? I mean, well, I was going to, I was going to mention I was going to mention Glazerson's uh, yes, code real quick. Yes, yep, and get your ahead. because Glazerson hadn't been out with a lot of codes lately, but he's got a new one he just put out called Atomic Iran 2020. And of course, uh -oh. we you know most of us know that Iran has bought nukes. They they've got nukes, mm -hmm. but they haven't made their own nukes, and they're almost uh, according to uh, Israel, they're going to make their own nukes this year. So it's kind of ironic that uh, Glazerson's code came out with five words in it. Number one, atomic. Number two, Iran. Number three, 5780. That's this year. <laughs> number four, Israel. Number five, enemy. So the enemy of Israel apparently will become atomic and able to build their own nukes in 5780 or 2020, which is where we are, uh, we're about to reach, uh, what do you call that, uh, critical? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the scale saturation of point. <laughs> yeah, saturation point. Uh, according to the codes, if they're true, uh, and, and, you know, it, it, you know, Glazerson's code announces that uh, Iran's basically where it wanted to go. And the only alternative is war, really, to stop that from happening any further. Now, what's interesting, uh, Stuart, you know, you read the, the code, well, or the uh, prophetic utterance a while ago about the pause and a mm -hmm. warning that they were going to come out with many missiles. And I'm beginning to think their missile, when they loose all those missiles against Israel and U.S. forces, that's, that's Daniel 8, wouldn't you think? It's probably Daniel 8 and maybe Isaiah 17. Now, we've tried to keep those separate. They may not be. Isaiah 17 may be just part of Daniel 8. Uh, a lot of people put, I think it's Psalm 83 into the mix, but Psalm 83 really is an attitude. It's not a war. It's the uh, spirit behind that causes the attack. Uh, let us drive Israel into the sea. All the nations are confederate against Israel. 
you you find that also in Isaiah uh, 17. You'll find it in Ezekiel. You'll find it uh, in a lot of different places where Israel, as America, by the way, is surrounded by enemies. And Netanyahu has long said and wanted us to take out Iran because of her nuclear ambitions. Uh, but I, I don't know uh, what to say beyond that. Uh, it's it's just strange. And I wanted to read something from a book called The Secret Destiny of America by Manley Hall, who was a high-level mason. As I read this, I want you to think about League of Nations and the United Nations and the takeover of the United States. Okay, and it says, It is in the larger picture of the world's future that Nostradamus, they're big fans of Nostradamus, who was a false prophet in a lot of ways, a lot of what he has to say has come true, but he's not anywhere near it. 100% accurate, which is what the Lord says you got to be if you're a true prophet. But anyway, Nostradamus indicates the coming of the Great League, or the Assembly of World Powers. This league is to be the only human hope of peace, the only solution to a competition between nations. The formation of this league begins the new life of the human race, will allow the human being at last to emerge into the estate for which he was fashioned. Now, this is all satanic. This is all um, contrary to what the Bible has to say about mankind. Barbarism ends with the beginning of world civilization. To be civilized, according to Cicero, is to reach the state of personal and collective behavior, think beehive, uh, collection, or collectors, and uh, which man can live together harmoniously and constructively united for the betterment of all. By this definition, we have never been civilized we have existed in a state of cultured savagery. The promise or the premise of Nostradamus is equally meaningful in these difficult years, for he assures us that the commonwealth of nations is to become a reality. Now, I want you to think about the League of Nations, the wars, and now the United Nations. What does the United Nations actually say? Well, we're the only solution there is. There's no other solution. Everybody has to go under the United Nations. Daniel 7, fourth beast power. Now think about what's going on behind the scenes in Washington, which is a communist coup, Virginia, another communist coup, and who knows what happened in <laughs> Kansas. Anyway, Remember what the Bible says? We struggle not against flesh and blood, but higher powers, principalities and powers of the high places. This is spirit. There are evil, satanic spirits behind all of what we're watching. The lawlessness, the treason, the sedition, the liars, the murderers, the New World UN order is satanic, to its very core. And the uh, Book of Enoch is very, very plain about a lot of that. Uh, the impeachment of Trumpy Bear is a diversionary tactic to keep America distracted while the final plans for the takeover of America go into high gear. Revolution, chaos, martial law, UN takeover under Article 7. So with that, maybe we should get into this Virginia gun grab and the latest that the uh, <laughs> the people are, the Governor Northam and his ilk 
are pulling there in Virginia. This looks very, very dangerous to me. Yeah, it's it's a serious matter. And what's interesting, uh, Hal Turner had a post on it. said, militia threats caused Virginia governor to declare a state of emergency. It says, Northam warns Virginia now seeing threats of armed confrontation and assault on its capital. And now Hal Turner's comment is, and, you know, you, 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 you don't know what's coming, but it's kind of interesting from history to, to look back on the way things happen. Hal Turner gave a warning that said Northam just set the stage for a false flag in Virginia. All of this is ahead of Monday's uh, gun rights rally, you know, and that's by the people that want to, uh, you know, carry a weapon or, or yep. have one at home. And uh, anyway, uh, he's kind of warning to watch out for January the 20th, but uh, the, the emergency order appears to be January the 17th through the 21st. What do you think, yes. sir? Now, I think you've got yeah, a copy of I, that. I got, let me read part of this. This is from the actual executive order. I got a copy of it. Uh, number 49, 2020, it says, Declaration of a State of Emergency due to potential civil unrest at the Virginia State Capitol. The Commonwealth of Virginia is a welcoming state. Virginians understand that diversity of opinion keeps our democracy strong. This is not, I, I want to break in here. This is how the Democrats and the communists work. Well, we, we just have a different of opinion. Uh, you're supposed to be not undermining the nation that's not opinion that's sedition cnn is guilty of sedition they're all guilty of it because they make up fake news it's not that they're disagreeing in fact trump himself and i'm not a supporter of trump really i'm very suspicious of trump um because of his background and who he knows and all of this, which he's openly admitted who he knows. He hasn't kept any of this a secret. Um, But when you produce fake news, all made up, not a shred of truth in it, and you publish it as a mainstream media, that, to undermine the legitimately elected president of the United States, you have therefore committed sedition at the very least and treason at the most. And CNN and all these others, they periodically are coming out with fake news stories, all made up, not a shred of truth in any of it. That's treason. That's sedition. Now, we got somebody like Hillary Clinton who uh, eliminated, I don't know, 30,000 emails that had been already subpoenaed, under a subpoena. Uh, they did a hatchet job on their computers. They bleached uh, their, their drives so that people couldn't find out what was on them. You and I would be in prison forever for doing that. Is Hillary Clinton in prison? Are any of these people in prison? No. This is proof, folks, this is proof of who is running deep state. Bob Barr just exonerated Hillary Clinton. They're not going to do anything to these people. All this stuff that Q was saying all next week, they're all going to be wearing orange jumpsuits, and they're going to be doing this, and they're all going to be going to prison, and we've got all these people going to Gitmo, and they're readying for all these people. I heard that for almost two and a half years from Q, and I repeatedly said on this program, Q is a misinformation, disinformation, probably deep state, and it's all a sham. America is going down. The Bible prophet said America was going down. We are going under the United Nations. Daniel chapter 7, we're one of the nations that the UN absorbs. We are going to, why do people think we've seen all these United Nations vehicles, military, strong vehicles all over the country? They've been photographed 
on trains, trucks, everywhere, all over this country. And yet the American people sit back twiddling their thumbs, gobbling down their brats, watching football. Well, I got news for the American people. Your TV's going to come down. You're not going to be gobbling brats. You'll be lucky if you're eating lawn. Uh, you're not a lawnmower going out munching the grass to survive. You have no idea how, what horrific uh, things are coming. And part of this is the judgment of the Lord. You cannot take the blessings of God, give the Lord the finger, and expect he's not going to reply, because he is going to reply. And I remember Red Elk when he was saying, uh, it's one thing to get a little tap on the shoulder, quite another to get spanked, and we're going to get spanked, and we don't survive. The spanking is so severe that America is not even remembered anymore. Anyway, it says here in the, in the executive board, getting back to that, credible intelligence gathered by Virginia's law enforcement agencies indicates that tens of thousands of advocates plan to converge on Capitol Square for events culminating on January 20th, 2020. Available information suggests that a substantial number of these demonstrators are expected to come from outside the Commonwealth, may be armed, and have as their purpose not peaceful assembly, but violence, rioting, and insurrection. Let me let me jump in there, Larry. Remember Antifa? Remember Charlottesville? Oh yeah, yeah, those good who, folks. Who, who did all the violence? The communists. Antifa is communist, folks. They're far, far left. We're watching the playbook, uh, Rules for Radicals. <laughs> it's just they're, they're doing everything Rules for Radicals said to do. Uh, we're watching a communist takeover of the United States. These aren't going to be, the, if there's trouble in Virginia, it's not going to be the law-abiding, gun-toting uh, Virginians. It's going to be plants from the communists themselves posing as that to start a revolution. False Actually, flag. False flag. You got it. That's exactly what's going on. And it's a perfect place for it. Um, I wish people would not assemble, frankly. you. I don't know why they're not recalling these people or impeaching these people. If they've got that many votes for, for guns, surely they can impeach Northam and his crew, and they can also um, recall them if they can't impeach them. And I'm not sure why they're not doing it. Well, Stuart. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to mention right there, I have seen some reports from uh, Quail and, and other locations that are saying that Northam and the ones, the Democrats that are in power have blocked uh, any impeachment or and even uh they're changing the rules, uh, even against uh, the, uh, the you know, where they try to remove them by, uh, by vote again, you know, or signatures. Uh, basically, it's a communist coup in America. Yep, yep. And, and uh, they get into power like Pelosi. Uh, I don't, American people are, I don't know. I don't know, Larry. Uh, there are a lot of good people in America. There are a lot of people who are awake and know exactly what's going on, but they're being isolated out. And uh, uh, we have to watch as the Lord protects his own, but destroys basically the entire nation. And uh, this is going to come through volcanic activity. It's going to come through earthquake activity. It's going to come through famine. It's going to come through economic collapse. There's a number of reasons why. And I want to move over. Department of Homeland Security briefs Kansas lawmakers. You want to get into that a little bit, Larry? That's kind of strange because we're yeah, getting it, a it, lot it, of different stories. Yeah, it's it's very interesting what's going on, and there is a lid on it, Stuart. You really have to pull the threads to even find any data on it. But here's uh, Hal Turner this morning. It says National Guard buses loaded with Kansas uh, State Representative 
legislators uh, are taken to military base for urgent security briefing, information uh, for security of the state of Kansas and its citizens. Briefing was life alter- a life-altering event, and legislators are utterly horrified. You know, they're, they're not able to get any data, but uh, basically uh, Hal said that Kansas State Senate briefing is for Thursday, that's tomorrow, uh, all kept under a cloak of secrecy. Now, also at the same time, you know, when I know you can't hardly find any data, but uh, Steve Quayle got some information from some insiders, and here's what he posted. He said, Continuity of Government, COG, principle yep. of establishing procedure to continue government in a, catastroph- a catastrophic event such as nuclear war, says political leaders in Kansas and Nebraska are now being briefed. And uh, from what I can tell from some of the data, the, the, those that are being briefed are simply shutting down their political operations, uh, you know, in the state government, and uh, nobody seems to know where this is going. Uh, what do you think? I'm not sure. It says, uh, well, let me read just part of this. Something absolutely dire is going on and is being kept very tightly under wraps by the federal government. Now, we've vetted this actually did take place. The cover stories are kind of weak. <laughs> hey, Stuart. <laughs> to say, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, you saw the image, and I posted it on my blog today, of the uh, the military officers that were loading these legislators on the bus. Did you yeah. notice close? It was brought. Somebody else, you know, keyed me in and said, "Look at the weapons they're wearing. This is not normal. This is other than normal. The the military officers are all wearing sidearms in open yes, view." I, yep, yep. I noticed that, and I noticed also that it looks like a, a white bus, folks. White is actually, for the most part, a warning. That you're dealing with the United Nations. Now, they claim these white buses were National Guard buses. I don't recall any state. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Larry, you were in the military. I was a long time ago. But I don't recall National Guard having buses. Uh, schools have buses. Uh, the U.N. has lots of buses uh, for a very obvious reason. I mean, you got to round up people and take them to FEMA camps or force march them. But uh, this is a white, appears to be, all white bus. I can't read what's on the side of it. But anyway, you're right. These are military National Guard types with sidearms displayed openly. Why do they need sidearms? For what? And could these uh, senators or congressmen of Kansas were they ordered to get on these buses? I'd be a little shook up if I was a, a senator or a congressman and I was suddenly ordered by the governor, you get on this uh, you get on this bus, you're going to a military base. I mean, well, they can give you any kind of reason. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it wasn't the governor that ordered them. Uh, it was Department of Homeland Security. And this is what's interesting, Stuart. Why did they have to be taken out of their safety of their building the, their capital and haul to a military base for a briefing when they could have briefed them in chambers. Uh, that's what some of the members even asked. They said, and one of them even said, well, you could have told us this in an email. Uh, the cover stories were a little bit, I thought, very, very weak. They didn't make any sense, which is typical of cover stories. Uh, DHS briefed Kansas lawmakers on business and agriculture threats. You don't have to go to a military base to be briefed on that kind of a threat. You do have to go, and it's Homeland Security, and Homeland Security, folks, is a creature of 9-11, and Homeland Security was formatted by the RAND Corporation. They had it on their shelf waiting for the event, and then they brought it forth. Homeland Security, by the way, is uh, has FEMA underneath it. Guess what FEMA just did? <laughs> they already have probably 
thousands upon thousands of uh, uh, AK-47 types. Here's the headline. FEMA buys assault rifles from China. Federal Emergency Management Agency has signed a purchase agreement with Beijing based weapons manufacturer. Now, I want you to think about the United Nations uh, and their playing footsie with China and how China is the uh, model for the United Nations New World Order. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, Beijing-based weapon manufacturer, Norinco, that will deliver into the agency's hands 5,000 CQA rifles, a clone of the M4A1 carbine, carbine, I guess you call it, used by U.S. military and law enforcement agencies. A FEMA source speaking with the promise of being anonymous said acting director Pete Gaynor brokered the deal shortly after his predecessor, Brock Long. He's the one who said, you are going to obey FEMA or you're going to be shot. Uh, Good thing he's gone. Anyway, um, he asserts that Gaynor contacted Norinco manager Kum Hai asking how long the nefarious arms company would take to produce and deliver 5,000 assault rifles. In addition to carbine, uh, carbines, Gaynor ordered for FEMA 250 NDM-86 sniper rifles. Remember the prophecy of Native Americans that snipers, the assassinations would begin and then the American people would get so sick of it that they would begin to assassinate government people. And it gets out of control. I guess it goes nation, grows not only nationwide, it goes worldwide. Chinese knockoffs of the legendary Russian Dragunov Norinko has promised delivery by March 31st, 2020. China's government approved an export license, and the U.S. State Department, as well as Customs and Immigration Enforcement, guaranteed the shipment will arrive unhindered at FEMA's port of choice. He admits he does not know why Geiner circumvented normal firearms procurement channels to illicitly buy the Chinese-made weapons, especially since FEMA already has an enormous arsenal tucked away beneath Mount Weather, the agency's primary base of operations since 1979. I know all about Mount Weather. I've even been there a long, long time ago. But Geiner's bizarre and convoluted delivery instructions clearly show that FEMA wants no public mention or record of the arms sale. The agreement calls for the weapons to be placed in wooden shipping crates labeled as produce. The crates will be stacked aboard a Liberian-flagged freighter traveling from the port of Shanghai to Miami. From there, FEMA intends to transport the firearms by rail to Mount Weather, where they will be stored until FEMA feels the time is right to mobilize itself against the citizenry. Hey, Stuart. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Let me interject something and get your opinion on this. As I was listening to what you were describing, that the very way that they're bringing those weapons into the country is the it, that's the CIA playbook for an insurrection against a government of another nation. So what would you want to bet, Stuart, that those weapons never go to Mount Weather? What would you want to bet that they're met when they land at our shores and the terrorists have them in hand? Yep, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, we're headed for an insurrection and the American people are sound asleep. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to work. According to Bible prophecy, this is a judgment from God. And, uh, you know, we have people that are getting afraid of all this. You have to go into the Bible. You have to uh, uh, take everything before the Lord. Um, he is the one who's going to protect. Uh, then maybe to switch gears, 
newly discovered mega volcano off the Philippines as the biggest caldera on Earth. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up because of what's going on also in um, Puerto Rico. I think that is a volcanic uh, situation developing in Puerto Rico. What do you think, Larry, about that? Well, hearing uh, there's a lot of that data being hidden, and I've been noticing that a lot of earthquakes are being uh, airbrushed, if you will, out of existence. We're not yeah. seeing much, very, very little. And, and at the same time, we're having a lot of magma movement under the ground, and it's pushing a lot of these uh, these uh, plates. It's putting pressures yes. on both ends. So there's a lot of trouble brewing, Stuart. A ton of trouble, and uh, we have no clue as to how bad this is going to get. I wanted to read this one, too. This is slightly off subject, but it deals with the U.N. and Agenda 213050. UCLA professor, we need to seriously question the idea of private home ownership. Now, if you've done any research into the United Nations, private property is outlawed. You cannot have private property. If you can't have private property and it can't be protected by law, you don't have any freedoms at all of any kind. That's why they're going after it. Um, it's, it's just one thing after another that we're watching. Uh, here's another one for you, Larry. You can, we can close with this one. This is apostasy. Pope Francis invites freakish circus with scantily clad women doing sexually charged dances to perform in reptile-shaped Vatican Hall. <laughs> How far does this have to go before people begin to wake up as to who the Vatican is? Well, I don't really know. Uh... Uh, he, he's an absolute reprobate. I mean, absolute reprobate. I mean, everything he says is against everything that Christ said. And <laughs> and he calls himself representative of Christ on the earth? I hardly think so. But anyway, you know, Stuart, I don't know. Uh, you know, as you said and started the show with, you was talking about all this perversion and craziness. Uh, you know, it's gone insane in this country. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, and I posted Skywatch TV the other day talking about uh, even uh, vagina-scented candles now are coming out for people to take home. <laughs> and, and you've got these, uh, I don't know, they're cat hats. I'll say it, the, I won't say the real word, but it's, they've gone crazy in this country. So, Stuart, I'm beginning to wonder if, if the only way God will wake up this world is with a monstrous earthquake. Yep. Either that or something. It's going to be horrific, whatever it is. I made a list of all. I mean, it's just amazing the things that are actually going on all over the world if you just make a list of it. Uh, we're in a lot of trouble, folks. A lot, a lot of trouble. And it may seem normal. I mean, you know, today was great. Uh, very quiet where I am. Uh, probably quiet where Larry is. But around the world, and around even the United States, there's something really going wrong with the people. And, the, you know, there are a lot of very sincere Catholics. And I'm hearing rumbles that more and more of them are now coming out against this pope. He's obviously a, a, a Jesuit fake. And uh, it's part of the overall deception, the delusion that the world is under. Anyway, final word, Larry, quickly. <laughs> yeah, I would just tell people we're really in a very cautious time. Watch going outside and where you go, what you do, because it seems like this impeachment insanity is going to be a smokescreen for something insidious operating within this country at the same time frame, and yep. we're seeing Virginia come together with Nebraska and Kansas warnings and DHS. It's dangerous, Stuart. Yep, it is. <laughs> And anyway, folks, heads up, and if anything breaks or war breaks out, we'll definitely be on the air, but we'll see you again on Friday night. And take care, everybody, and uh, heads up, your redemption draweth nigh. Thanks for listening, and thanks, Larry, for coming on.
Night, everyone.